Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about the GLP-1 agonist. The full form is glucagon-like peptide receptor agonist. As we all know, diabetes cases has been increasing day by day into the world. So the medicines which are available, they are even not able to control the diabetes. And the newer and newer form of the drugs are available into the market nowadays. No doubt their generic forms are still not available into the market. Uh, they are very costly also. But we need to understand these drugs. Let's discuss about the physiology of this GLP-1. It's a glucagon-like peptide. It is a one type of incretin. It's a peptide which is normally also released from our gut. When it is released, whenever we have a high glucose into our body, especially into the intestine, it is GLP-1 analogs are released. This will mix into the blood. They will reach to the pancreas. They will reach to the beta cells of the pancreas. They will bind with the incretin receptors and ultimately adenylate cyclase will be activated and exocytosis of the insulin will occur and insulin is released. The main mechanism of this GLP-1 analog is they are increasing the insulin release. Right. So they cannot be used into the type 1 diabetes mellitus in which the production of the insulin is not there, beta cells are non-functional. So the use of this GLP analog are mainly into the type 2 diabetes. Along with the beta cells, they also inhibit the alpha cells. Alpha cells are also present into the pancreas and they will inhibit the alpha and inhibit the release of the glucagon. Now what are the another mechanisms of this GLP-1? No doubt they are increasing insulin release. They are suppressing the glucagon release. So glucose will not be formed further. So another two main action of this GLP-1 is they are increasing gastric emptying. They are increasing the fastening the gastric GIT motility and that's why it will increase the uh, removal of the excessive glucose also. That's why the patient also develops diarrhea after taking the GLP-1 analog. They are increasing the gastric emptying. So when you are taking these medications and diarrhea developed, nothing to worry about. It's its physiological effect. And it will also suppress the appetite because they also works onto the central as well as the peripheral neuroreceptors. Yes, and that's why it also suppress the appetite. Very good thing. If your appetite is less, you will consume less. If you consume less, so automatically diabetes will be controlled. So these drugs are also approved for the obesity also. Yeah. So always remember this GLP uh, only released when we have a high carbohydrate diet, high glucose diet. What we have thought that let's make some GLP analog from to the outside. Yeah. So if you make the GLP analog from to the outside, the physiological main effects increase insulin release, decrease glucagon, suppress appetite, increase gastric amputing. We will also uh, do the same thing with after synthetic molecules. Okay, fine. The another main uh, key uh, important function of these GLP analog is they also improve the beta cell health. They decrease the apoptosis of the beta cell. That's why we can say that the pancreas functionality will be preserved after giving these medications. That's also very key functionality of the GLP-1 analog. So why not we just prepare GLP-1 analog into the laboratory and give to the patient? But it's not possible because GLP is a one type of the incretin peptide, peptide protein. Whenever the things which are protein, if we take it orally, it is destroyed into our GIT tract. So it will not work. Uh, these GLP analogs are actually uh, degraded by the DPP-4, right? So we have also discussed the DPP-4 inhibitors also, cetagliptin, tenagliptin, vildagliptin. So uh, actually when we give this GLP-1 analog, the natural GLP will be destroyed. It will not work into our body. What we can do? We need to develop some other synthetic molecules. So what are those molecules? The first molecule which was developed for the GLP-1 that was exenatide. Actually, we are historically uh, learning this drug. It is not used nowadays. Uh, what are the main effects, problems with this drug? We will discuss that things. Okay, fine. So exenatide, it's a synthetic molecule. Yeah, it is not destroyed by the DPP-4. So it is resistant to the DPP-4 enzyme. That's also good. It will bind with that GLP-1 receptors. So it will increase the insulin. So effect is same and the problem is solved. Fine. But the main thing is uh, it is inactivated orally. So we also need to give its subcutaneous injections. So exenatide should be administered injectably. Subcutaneously mainly it is used. What was the main problem with the exenatide? The duration of action from to the exenatide was uh, very less. Okay, fine. And there are some another problem also. No doubt uh, vomiting, nausea, some cases diarrhea develops with the exenatide. If you use for some longer duration, no doubt the tolerance will develop. But the main problem was uh, antibodies develop again the exenatide. Very big problem. And some cases uh, acute pancreatitis also develops. The exenatide, it's not now a use in a use. 
it is a synthetic molecule no doubt it was the first glp1 synthetic analog which was developed but the another medication that is the liraglutide so liraglutide it is also a glp1 analog glucagon like peptide analog the problem with the exenatide that was solved by the lira the main problem was the duration of action exenatide if we give before mill yeah half an hour before mill it will very good control postprandial hyperglycemia so liraglutide actually it will prevent this postprandial hyperglycemia for the longer duration remember this okay it tightly bound to the plasma protein so its mechanism action becomes even longer than the 24 hours main problem with liraglutide also nausea vomiting sometimes diarrhea develop into the patient and we all know that glp it is an glp analog it will suppress the appetite increase the gastric emptying so that's why uh, the anti obesity these drugs are also uh, marketed as for the anti obesity drug because if the appetite is less if you if you take a very low diet then automatically your body weight will be reduced right so this liraglutide which is available also subcutaneously so that's how so until, uh, we can say that exenatide was the first developed a short acting controlling the postprandial hyperglycemia very well then we developed a longer acting molecule which is a liraglutide but it is also given a subcutaneously remember these these are peptides it cannot be given orally but to solve this problem we have the another molecule and the name of the molecule is a semaglutide this semaglutide is can be given subcutaneously as well as orally so uh, generic molecules formulations are not available uh, even one company is forming this drug orally as well as the subcutaneously these are semaglutide available i have also written the dose of these medications because nowadays uh, in place of exenatide and liraglutide semaglutide is marketed much uh, because if uh, we use a semaglutide its duration of action one week yeah. so if you take a subcutaneous inter injection 0 0.25 milligram that 0 0.25 milligram will work for one week so the compliance of the patients will be very much very high but if the patient want to take semaglutide orally then oral preparations are also available under the preparation of 3 mg, 7 mg and 14 mg. But if we take the orally, that oral dose should be daily. So remember this, semaglutide, uh, which is also one type of the GLP-1 analog. So the side effects will be the same like uh, liraglutide, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea may occur. And these drugs are also approved for the anti-obesity because they suppress the appetite and increase the gastric emptying. So very well this is a semaglutide also used to start with the 0.25 milligram increase up to the 0.5 milligram also uh, with the pen we can administer this semaglutide so injectable dose of the semaglutide is uh, once in a week while the oral dose it can be 3 7 or 14 it can be taken daily but also uh, many clinical trials are still remaining to be conducted onto the semaglutide okay uh, in pregnancy it cannot be used if the uh, in the younger age group below 18 years it is still not approved so uh, remember these uh, semaglutide, liraglutide, exenatide. I think we need to understand uh, sema and lira very much because their use will be increased day by day. Uh, because in type 2 diabetes mellitus, we have a very uh, low groups, very small groups of drugs which are available to control the diabetes. Uh, these drugs actually suppress the appetite. Patient will take the uh, diet will less. So it will be also uh, benefiting us into the type 2 diabetes patients. I think uh, the use of these drugs should be increased. Uh, that's all about today's session. Thanks for listening.